Hey guys, hey gut feeders. Today we're going to talk about fasting, different types of fasting, and you also find out if fasting is recommended for you, if I'm personally recommending you to fast and which type of fast is the best for you. Many of you have requested this video. I'm really happy to talk about that because it's such a hype at the moment. Everybody's talking about intermittent fasting, juice fasting, water fasting, dry fasting. These are also the four types of fasting we're gonna talk about today. And there's a lot of misconception. People just jump into these fasting programs and they're actually damaging their body. And that's what I wanna save you from to be able to really make a conscious decision together with your body, not just with your mind, I'm gonna do this, but also really tuning into your body and understanding what effects fasting can have on your health positive but also negative if you're new to this channel my name is peggy from peggyshimmer.com i warmly welcome you to gut feelings the channel to support you to become your own health expert so you have all the energy and the knowledge to go out there and bring your gifts into the world together with your body with a stable health and with a lot of energy to manifest your dreams now, fasting is an interesting subject because there's not an answer like yes or no. Now, let's find out first, why do you want to fast? What's your goal? Like, what do you have in mind? That's the first question you need to answer. And the second one is how healthy are you at the moment? Are you doing this because you have chronic health issues? You're really suffering. If that's your motivation for fasting, it might be good to listen to this video and think about it twice. If you're watching this video, I guess you already heard a lot about fasting, you heard about the health benefits, and you might have tried it out yourself already, or are on the peak of deciding if you want to go for it or not. There are many health benefits and people talk about them. So one great thing is it helps you to rejuvenate your body. Yeah, fasting, because our digestion takes up up to 80% of our overall energy, if you don't need to digest, your body has time to cleanse itself, has time for cell aptosis, for example, this is a programmed cell death, where your body basically replaces the old cells with new cells, with more alive cells, yeah, in your blood, in your lymphatic system, it helps to heal your intestinal lining, yeah, has time for that. So rejuvenate the liver, flushes out toxins, breaks off these micro pockets of heavy metals that we can have in the brain. It can boost our immune system, although it can also go in the other direction. We're going to talk about that in a moment. So many, many health benefits of fasting. These are just a few. Now, let's talk about the other side. Let's talk about the side that people <laughs> tend to forget nowadays and just go for the positive and we're just going to do it. We're going to take our mind strength and we're going to force our body to do that. I believe our body is highly intelligent. If you're somebody who's struggling with weight loss, yeah, you might have these little extra rings here around the belly area or your thighs, you want to lose some weight. Now the body doesn't just store weight for nothing. This is an awesome example for how intelligent your body is. And that's also a reason why I don't recommend you if you want to lose weight to do fasting. If our body can't flush out the toxins from our system because our liver is overburdened, because we have too many toxins in our body, it's just too much also for our adrenal glands, what it does, it's highly intelligent, you know, it finds the spot where it can store these toxins far away from the vital organs like the heart, the blood vessels, the brain, the liver, the gut, really to protect your system. What it does is it stores them in fat cells because they are the most stable cells that we can have. Basically, you run danger in poisoning your body with the toxins and the viruses that have been stored safely away by your intelligent body. So guys, that's just one example. So if I say force, I mean fasting as a way to force your body to do something is not a good idea. It's always about understanding how your body works and then you basically I see it more like as a dance. See your body not as a thing, but more as a live being which needs your respect and which always works for you. And the best way to help your body heal from whatever you want to heal is to do it gentle. Yeah, gently support the body with the nutrients it needs and take away the things that put more burden on your body, dairy products, eggs, alcohol, just to name a few, a coffee, of course, cigarettes, things like that, other drugs. Support your body to gently move in the direction. Yeah, without this kind of fasting can be really like a push. Yeah, and that's also 
If you want to do that, that's a good sign to not do it. Now guys, let's go into the four different types of fasting, dry fasting, water fasting, juice fasting and intermittent fasting. I'm actually going to start with the most gentle one that from my point of view, which is juice fasting. Some people choose to do a juice fast once a week. Yeah, they just do one liquid day, so to say, per week. Or you do that for seven days. You do People even do that longer for 14 days to help them boost their immune system, help them clean their guts and rejuvenate their body. Now guys, this is the most gentle and the most safe way to do fasting. And this is because you have the healthy glucose. Hopefully never just do a green juice fasting. This is not gonna, this is not gonna help your body. You always need to have healthy glucose in there. So cucumbers have glucose, um, all kinds of fruits. Yeah, get some apple juice in there. Of course, green juices are great. Yeah, celery, have kale, spinach, juicing, things like that. So you have all the mineral salts really to help also your kidneys to restore itself, to have your adrenal glands. Your intestines are also very important that you have enough zinc and magnesium and calcium to really help themselves to heal themselves and then of course you have the glucose and this is really key people just who just do green juice because they are scared of carbohydrates that can actually damage your body because your liver your brain they need healthy glucose to survive now if you don't have enough healthy glucose in your brain you can't heal your brain cells and you're actually going to lose brain cells every cell in the body is running on glucose i know we have this fruit fear right now this kind of don't eat any sugar and of course i'm not recommending you the chocolate bar or the dairy cake but healthy glucose fruits cucumbers tomatoes things like that they are essential for healing if you want to do a juice day once a week i'm actually i don't have anything against that even if you have chronic issues because that's a very safe way to help your liver to cleanse to help give your gut pausing moment and on the same time you get all the nutrients so what the biggest mistake people make before they start fasting is they are nutrient deficient yeah, they don't have enough nutrients their body is already suffering they have chronic health issues they have a high toxicity in their body their liver is overburdened they have a low immunity low immune system and they have adrenal fatigue meaning they often have these energy dips and yeah, they feel chronically tired things like that you have palpitations heart palpitations also can be related to your adrenal glands and then they jump into a 20-day water fast that's the worst thing you can do so juice fasting pretty safe a great way to start yeah don't do that if you have chronic health issues for a longer period of time start with one day a week improve your health more and more then you can look into doing that a few days longer and of course with juice fasting you know what's my favorite juice to help you heal your gut and your immune system quicker help to restore your adrenal glands and detox your liver celery juice yes so celery juice definitely give that a place there drink plain celery juice first thing in the morning best thing to do. I've made several videos about juicing. I'm going to link them for you right now and also in the description below. You can check them out if you want to know more about juice fasting. So that's the first thing we want to talk about. Juice fasting. Now it's come to water fasting. Water fasting is something that you only want to do if you have a pretty stable health. If you have any chronic issues, adrenal fatigue, you feel tired all day long, you have neurological stuff happening anxiety depression pain in your body yeah that's often neurological often has to do with epstein bar virus don't go for juice uh, don't go for water fasting yet improve your health and then you can move into that direction and why i'm saying that and i give you a great example why this is not something you want to do if you have chronic and i give you and i give you the best reason why because what happens if your body just gets water for a longer period of time, let's say like three, four days or even longer. People do water fasting for immense amount for a very long period of time. So if you go into juice fasting and if you go into water fasting and you're nutrient deficient, you feel a little bit sick, you have already an impaired immune system, your liver is overburdened and you feel chronically tired. What happens there is two things. First, you force, I mean really force and push your liver 
to release toxins. Because if your liver doesn't get enough nutrients, it also can't store the toxins the best way. Yeah. Also going to talk about weight loss before. If your body needs to break off these fat cells, then the toxins, they will just be in your bloodstream and your body is not able to deal with so many toxins at the same time. If, however, you do improve your diet step by step, the body starts to release more and more toxins, starts to cleanse the liver naturally and per up per, you get rid of the toxins. But for a water fast, you just push out the toxins into your bloodstream, you can't get rid of them and your body actually is going to be damaged more because now the toxins, they are free floating, they can hurt your brain, they can really, really impair your gut health, allow pathogens to grow over and then in the end, because of the enteropathic cycle, everything goes through the liver again and through the, ki and through the kidneys then. So kidney damage is also a big one from the toxins that are released through this kind of pushing moment. Then your liver needs to reabsorb the toxins. You know, first you release this, then it needs to reabsorb. It's going to cause immense stress on your body. I've seen people who do like 20 days water fasting. They went in with low immunity, nutrient deficiency. They start feeling a little bit better. Then they come out of the water fast and they have these major breakdown of their health. And this is the second thing that can happen if you do water fasting and you don't have a stable health is your immune system is going to break off. Yeah, because when you don't have enough nutrients in your body and you do water fasting all the time, you have the toxins circulating now in your bloodstream, your immune system is going to suffer. And any kinds of pathogens, viruses, bacteria, fungus, parasites that you have already in your body when starting the water fast actually can grow nicely, nice and stronger, have more impact. And then you stop the water fast and you have this breakdown. So that's a big, big warning sign. If you have chronic issues, if you are nutrient deficient, don't do water fasting. Never, 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 ever push your body just because you heard something on YouTube or somebody told you we can do water fasting and just speed up the healing process. It can really go in the other direction. Go for juice. <coughs> Sorry, I'm getting so excited about the steam that I actually get from this with my voice. So if you suffer from chronic issues, go for improving your diet and then peu à peu do some juice fasting gentle move gentle the body likes gentle and on the long run you're really going to have health benefits from that so that's my take on water fasting a great idea if you have a stable health just want to get for the peak performance in any other ways don't do it also time wise i don't recommend water fasting even if you're healthy longer than one or two days so let's move on to a very very interesting subject and that's a dry fasting. Dry fasting that's the only one of the four topics we talk about where I have a very clear answer for you which is no don't do it never ever do dry fasting. Why? First of all it's absolutely not natural we need liquids our body is running 80-90% of water there's no way of dry fasting being healthy for your body. When you fast your body eliminates more toxins and one way to get them out of your body if possible is through water is through your kidneys so the worst thing you can do dry fasting you're going to damage your entire body because the toxins just build up in your body they don't have a way to get out you're actually losing brain cells because there's such a high toxicity here the body naturally even if you don't have any toxins in your body it's naturally throughout the process through metabolism your body creates toxins by itself which normally you just flush out by drinking through fruit juices things like that if you do dry fasting that's the worst worst thing to do completely get that for spiritual reason people go for fasting periods but then at least please drink water yeah without water without liquids juices things like that our body is just poisoning itself and afterwards you can have major major impact on your overall health so guys not much more to say dry fasting no go if anybody recommends dry fasting for you the best thing to do is or just walk away so fourth thing intermittent fasting that is to break up your day in feeding time and in fasting time normally people do that they stop eating in the evening at a certain point let's say seven and then they have 12 hours 14 hours 16 hours during their sleep and in the morning where they don't eat and just drink water or sometimes even coffee which is really bad for your adrenal glands by the way and your hcl levels can't recommend that 
So if you do this intermittent fasting, again, important that you don't have adrenal fatigue. Because if your adrenal glands are already impaired, they're not getting then the healthy glucose, they are actually be forced to produce more adrenaline flushed it for your body, which is highly erosive for your blood vessels, can damage your brain, it's heavy on the liver, we're not supposed to be running on adrenaline 24-7 which we often do because of our lifestyle today. If you suffer from these energy dips, yeah, if you feel often weak or you have neurological issues, don't do intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is recommended for people who wake up in the morning, yeah, they had a light meal in the evening, they wake up in the morning and they can't eat anything. You know, there are so many children who are forced to eat breakfast because that's the most important meal of the day, when actually for them it might be really, really beneficial if they just drink a celery juice, they have a lemon juice with honey, for example, and then eat at 11 or 12 or whatever feels comfortable for you. It's really about listening to your body. Yeah, If you have an impaired digestion, if your nerve endings in your gut are very high, highly sensitive, they are inflamed, maybe you have SIBO, you can't really eat anything, you always have discomfort. I completely understand that you want to go for intermittent fasting. And it might be a good idea, it might be helpful, especially if you do celery juice, because that really helps to improve your gut, kill viruses, kill bacteria, and deeply nourish the gut with minerals, with these cluster salts that are in there. So there, intermittent fasting can be great for a period of time while you're healing. Or if that's just something you feel like that's your constitution yeah you feel in the morning you work much better if you don't eat heavy meals go for fruits yeah go for fruit juices that are awesome healing banana and these healing juices that we talked about celery and cucumber I'm not against intermittent fasting if that's something that comes naturally to you however if you have chronic issues and you're really really sick or you have adrenal fatigue these energy dips i can't recommend intermittent fasting, I recommend the opposite. I recommend you to eat every one, two, three hours to keep your blood sugar levels stable and to actually support your body to heal from its nutrient deficiency, flush the body with vitamins, with minerals. So it basically has the bricks to build up your strength again. Of course, then it's important what you snack. Chocolate is not the same as having a celery, a date and an apple. Healthy glucose here and healthy minerals are important. So that was what I wanted to share with you about the four types of fasting. Now, whenever, whatever kind of fasting or not fasting you do, water and a high quality water is really important. You don't want to drink more toxins with your water. You want to have pure water. One of the best water filters that I found after testing out, I don't know how many things, six, seven different types and really searching for the best. I found something that's called the Berkey water filter. I have a video on that. If you want to check that out and find a water filter that is good for you, it's actually much better than bottled water, especially if they are in plastic, even glass bottles, because bottled water often, interesting enough, is less controlled than tap water. So make sure you check out that video about the Berkey water filter. I demonstrate that and I talk more about that. I link that in the description below. And guys, if there are any questions I didn't answer right now or that just came up through the video, Please ask me, put them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer them. Thank you so much for watching. Please like the video. If you do, give me a thumbs up and make sure you are also part of our Gut Feeler family already. Subscribe to the channel so we can stay in touch throughout these videos and really build a community of health experts, of people who know what's happening inside their body and who share their expert knowledge with each other. I see you in the next video. Have a great day. Bye.